my name is Dr. Eleanor Morris, and this is a presentation as part of Maker Medic about applying to psychiatry training. Here are some details about me, along with my contact email address if you have any questions following the presentation. I'm currently an academic F2 doctor working in Sheffield, and I've applied for both psychiatry core training and an academic clinical fellowship. So I'll be starting work as an ACF in psychiatry in Leeds from August 2023. But this presentation is mainly going to be focusing on the core training pathway. So we're going to start by just looking at some of the pros and cons of psychiatry training in general. So starting firstly with the pros. So for me, the main thing that draws me to psychiatry is I just find it really interesting. I had a psychiatry job as an F1 doctor in the crisis team. And it was really nice to experience how involved we can be with patients' lives and how every case is very different because everyone's got a different family situation, different upbringing, and some of the conditions can be quite chronic and others quite acute. And there's a lot still that we don't really understand about psychiatry. So for me, my advice for anyone choosing a specialty is What's the topic that you'd be quite happy reading about in years to come because you'll need to pass professional exams and so forth? And for me, that's psychiatry. Significant patient contact with long term patient relationships. That does, of course, vary depending where you work. If you're in more of a crisis service, you might only have shorter term contact compared to um, some other services like, for example, addiction, where you might have much longer contact. Fewer uncautious with the ability to work in the community. So the on-call shifts in psychiatry are quite often non-resident, so you don't necessarily have to be on site. Um, and particularly as you become more senior, you don't necessarily need to be available overnight or at the weekends, depending which service you're working as a part of. And being able to work in the community for me is a plus as well. It's quite a different dynamic to hospital working. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people get an opportunity to experience some of that during their foundation years. Um, and I think you kind of know whether that's going to be something that suits you or not. Um, and for me, I just really enjoyed that working style. The multidisciplinary approach. So a lot of working with mental health nurses and um, with um, sort of lived experience um, individuals who work alongside patients. Um, and there's just various roles depending which teams you're a part of. And they're all very involved in making decisions together. So I really appreciate that part of working in specialty. Dedicated time for development with opportunities for research, education and leadership. So if you're interested in psychiatry, I'd recommend going to some of the Royal College events because I've learned more about the roles that are available from going to those events. For me, going for an ACF role, that means a quarter of my time will be allowed for research. But even within the normal psychiatry job, there's opportunities for quality improvement and there's chances to take on different projects. There can be um, educational roles. So, for example, you could take a year where you just do education within psychiatry. Um, and of course, as with many specialties, there's opportunities to go into leadership. For me, the main disadvantages of psychiatry are that there are fewer procedures and less involvement in physical health. So there's still some involvement. So, for example, if you were looking at eating disorders, for example, there's a huge crossover with physical health. Um, and particularly when you're more junior in the team, you'll be often involved in things like physical health reviews. But it's much less than if you're working in a GP or hospital setting. Long waiting times and frustration at the lack of services. So that's something that's really put me off psychiatry when I was considering it, because a lot of people are frustrated that you can be referred for, for example, an autism and ADHD assessment. And it's not uncommon to be waiting over two years for those services. And even with things that are more acute, so perhaps anxiety, depression, there's still a wait of several months for services in a lot of areas. And I say a lot of areas because there is geographical variability and that, again, is a disadvantage. A lot of the services between regions are very heavily supported by charities. So therefore, depending on the charity presence in an area may depend on the services available. And it can impact on the clinician's own personal health, safety and well-being as well. And so some people find that going into people's homes or being involved in forensic psychiatry can be quite intimidating. And a lot of the conversations are naturally very heavy. So 
you do need to weigh up whether that's something that you feel personally able to cope with and whether it's something you really want in your career. Um, and it's something I've definitely thought about, but obviously decided that it um, is not something that concerns me to an extent that it would put me off from the career. So the training programme is relatively straightforward for psychiatry. So again, this is the non-academic route that I'm talking about. So you go through your foundation years. You can then obviously take your F3, F4 years if you wanted to. But then you've got your core training and your specialty training. So it's six years in total if you go straight through and go through full time. So the first three years are more general. So your core training, that's where you experience a bit of adult psychiatry, a bit of either older adult or CAMS, and you'll experience some other subspecialties as well. And then you can choose your specialty training. So specialties within psychiatry include things like general adult, CAMS, older adult, it includes forensics, and then there are also um, some other subspecialties. So like neuropsychiatry isn't a defined route, so you might decide that you want to go into general adult and then go into research alongside. There's things like addictions, eating disorders, and um, there's also some more niche ones. And um, so, for example, being involved in sports psychology and being a psychiatrist within that. And um, so there's a lot of areas you can explore. And again, I recommend going to Royal College events to find out a bit more about what's available. There's also the opportunity to be able to dual CCT. So say if you wanted to do general adult and psychotherapy, then you could actually put those together and spend slightly longer on your specialty training but come out qualified in both and that's becoming quite a popular option and also some specialties do now do run through training so rather than doing core then um, specialty actually you could just do six years from the outset in a particular subspecialty so child and adolescent do that and um, intellectual disability has started doing that in some areas as well so that offers you less flexibility, but more continuity because you know that you're in it for the six years in that subspecialty. As I've mentioned, there's a lot of subspecialties you can go into. So the most common ones are the ones that I've listed on the screen here. Um, and I've mentioned all of those previously, but there are also a lot of other subspecialties not mentioned within that. And um, so addictions, eating disorders, neuropsychiatry, perinatal, sports, social and rehabilitation and academic, which might be combined with any of the others. So the application process currently for psychiatry is actually very straightforward. You apply on Oriel in November time, and that's the same as you would with pretty much any other specialty. You then sit your MSRA exam in around January and then you're purely ranked off of your MSRA. So then offers come out in March and you're able to say where you would like to be based uh, for psychiatry. So then when you get your offer through, it will be for a particular region and you can then look for your jobs within that region. This might change in the future. The reason partly why this was is actually because competition for psychiatry had traditionally traditionally been quite low. Um, so post COVID, where actually we couldn't do face to face interviews, those were removed. There wasn't a huge call to bring it back. But that being said, now that we are post COVID and now that the competition ratio is rising, particularly with so many other specialties taking on the MSRA, just be aware that there could be interviews brought back in the future. So interviews used to be part of the psychiatry application process. I did still have an interview, but that's because I went down the academic route. So the interviews that I had were for the ACF role. So if you're considering ACF, you will still need to have an interview. So in terms of the MSRA, so I've mentioned that it's an exam. So it's an exam for getting into psychiatry, but also a variety of other specialties. In 2023, they're the ones listed on the screen. So it was originally a general practice exam, but it's also now used for core surgical training, neurosurgery, nuclear medicine, anaesthetics, obs and gynae, radiology. So really, most specialties you're looking at going into could involve the MSRA. So the MSRA has two parts to it. One part is professional dilemmas, which is where you have 50 scenarios. And it's a bit like the SJT that you do at the end of medical school and on going into medical school as well. So you're given a scenario and it's asking you, 
rank the following actions in response to this situation. I think that this is fairly common sense. Um, I ranked quite well in this part of the exam. Really, you need to look at GMC guidance and think about what is the optimal thing that they would want you to do in that situation, rather than necessarily what you would do in that situation. So think about what would the ideal answer be. So it's a little bit artificial, but most of the questions are relatively clear. Then there's a problem solving section. So this is more questions and they're very much centered around primary care. So the slight disadvantage, if you're going into something like psychiatry, you're going to be learning about a lot of topics here that don't feel very relevant to you because it might include things like, for example, childhood conditions and physical health, something that you might not come across that often in your later career. But in terms of revision, it's not that far beyond really what you've learnt for medical school finals. So it's just refreshing that knowledge. I personally found question banks quite useful for this and just going through as many questions as possible. So what can you do now? So I mentioned really the main thing in the application is the MSRA. So if you're worried about the competition for getting into psychiatry, I would say starting that as soon as possible. However, what you can do is you can show commitment to the specialty, which is useful really for your later career anyway in building a portfolio, but also if interviews are to be brought back. So that could include things like going to events and talks, there's various competitions that you can Google and have a look at, and networking within the specialty. Teaching, audit, QI and research. So this is naturally easier if you've had a rotation in psychiatry. But if you can do things like getting teaching qualifications, if you can get involved in projects or publications, those will all be beneficial. Reflective practice, um, so things like going through your foundation portfolio, making sure you're reflecting on things that have happened, doing dots, mini kexes and so on. And then just building up experience. So if you can't get a foundation rotation in psychiatry, then trying to do taster days. Um, so it's quite useful if you can do a bit of that in community and some in inpatient because they are quite different in terms of what to expect. Um, some people might have had good experience at medical school of psychiatry, others not so much. The more experience you can get is, is better really. Not even just so much for building the portfolio, but just so that you know whether this is the career that you want to go into. So that's all from me. Thank you very much. And as I mentioned, if you want to get in touch, my email address was towards the start of the presentation. Thank you.